In this session, we discuss some fundamental aspects about evaporator operations. I will look at what the evaporation process is, a couple of examples of industrial application, and then the use of evaporation in relevant industries. And then we'll talk about some factors affecting the operation of an evaporator. Now let's look at a simple example. Maple syrup is produced from the sap that's obtained from different maple trees. The sap contains approximately 2% of sugar. However, the maple syrup that we use contains approximately 66% sugar. Now how to change this 2% sugar to 66% sugar? And this is done by removing the water from the sap. So this is just a household type maple syrup production example. If you get the sap and if you remove water, you end up getting the maple syrup. Now the process through which the water is removed from the sap, that's called evaporation. So the role of evaporation in this maple syrup production process is to remove part of the solvent, which is water. And this is done by heating the solution to evaporate the solvent. For this case, it's water. And this process is known as evaporation. And the equipment that is used for evaporation is called the evaporator. So that's basically the definition of evaporation. Literally, it refers to a process by which a substance is converted from a liquid state and carried off as vapor. So in process industries, evaporation is conducted to remove a portion of the volatile solvent from a solution of non-volatile solute. And the purpose is to produce a thick liquor. So this final maple syrup is a thick liquor of the sap. So in general, the thick liquor is the desired product. However, there are some exception as well. For example, in the production of portable water from saline water, the vapor is the product. So let's look at an industrial example and the role of evaporation in that process. In paper making, you need to produce pulp from wood chips. And that's done in the digester where sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide are used to separate lignin from the fibers. So in wood chips, the lignin is there to keep the fibers together to form a strong bond. To separate the fibers, you need to remove that lignin. And that's why you need to use some chemicals that will dissolve the lignin part. This lignin residues, there are these hemicellulose in the wood chips. And the inorganic chemicals that's used, all together they form what is called this black liquor. In the black liquor, there is about 15% solid and approximately seven tons of black liquor are produced per ton of pulp so there is a huge amount of liquor produced also the liquid content in the liquor is really high now black liquor is quite toxic to aquatic life it causes a very dark caramel color in the water also it contains more than half of the energy content of the wood chips so two regions that we cannot simply release the black liquor into a water reservoir because it's toxic. At the same time, there is a large amount of energy content in the black liquor. This is just a schematic of the process that we have the chips coming in and going into the digester. From there, you have the black liquor going out and here it involves the evaporation process. Now, because of the high water content of the black liquor, you cannot use it in a recovery boiler. The solid content needs to be increased between 65 to 80% to use it in the boiler. So the thick liquor is used in the recovery boiler to produce energy and recover the cooking chemicals. So that's where the evaporation comes into place to produce the thick liquor having 65 to 80% of solid content from the weak liquor which contains approximately 15% solid. Now there are other operations that involves removal of liquid from solid. For example, in the drying, we have seen liquid is removed from solid. For drying, the residue is solid, but for evaporation, the residue still remains liquid. So that's how it's different from the drying operation. Now for the case of crystallization, the focus is on forming crystals. For evaporation, the emphasis on concentration of the solution. Another operation is used for separation, which is distillation. 
Now for distillation, typically the vapor is multi-component. On the evaporation, the vapor typically contains only one solvent. So the vapor is often single component. Now let's look at some industrial use of evaporation. In the food industry, for example, to produce evaporated milk, condensed milk or cream, evaporation is widely used. For fruit juice or pulp, also evaporation is needed. To produce puree-form food or herbal extract, coffee and tea, in all of these processes, evaporation is used. In the chemical sector, dyes, glycerine, paints, pigments, all use the evaporation operations and such is the agrochemicals for producing caustic soda, chlorides and sulfates and in the polymer industry for producing monomers and polymers. Evaporation is also common in the pharmaceutical industry in the production of herbicides and insecticides for both separation and purification as well as for deodorization and decoloring, evaporation is used. In the case of wastewater treatment, to concentrate the wastewater for use in the incinerator, evaporators are used. Also for concentration of the reverse osmosis membrane rejects, evaporation is used. Also for deodorization purpose, evaporation is used. Let's look at the factors that affect operation and design of an evaporator. Liquid concentration is one of the factor that affects the design and operation. Feed is generally dilute for an evaporator. However, as evaporation goes on, both density and viscosity increases. Now these two parameters significantly affect heat transfer. For some cases, for example, for the black liquor, the viscosity may increase by even 10 folds. Also, if the concentration increase, the crystals may form, which must be removed to avoid tube clog in the evaporator. For example, for Concord grape, the high level of tartrates can crystallize. Another issue is what is called this boiling point elevation. So boiling point may rise significantly, say for above 95%, Ammonium nitrate has an extremely high boiling point elevation. Foaming is another characteristic that affects the operation of the evaporator. Foam may accompany the vapor causing heavy entrainment. The typically organic substances have more foaming tendency. The caustic solutions, skim milk or some fatty acid form foam or froth. Temperature sensitivity of the materials is another factor that affects the design and operation of an evaporator. Pharmaceuticals and food products as well as some fine chemicals may get damaged when heated at moderate to high temperature. For example, milk, juice, vegetable extract, medicine, if you heat at different level of temperatures, the quality of the product may significantly deteriorate. For some products, exposure to even low heat source for long time may also affect the quality. So depending upon the feed and desired product and their quality, so both temperatures and the time of heating need to be maintained. Another factor is scaling. So scale affects the heat transfer considerably and when you have higher solid content that can accelerate the scaling process. So cleaning of the evaporators needed to be done. For example in phosphoric acid production by digestion of the phosphate rock in sulfuric acid calcium sulfate is a constituent which causes significant scaling. So materials of construction is another factor that needs significant consideration. Commonly steel, 316 stainless steel, can be used for many purposes having different duties. However, some feed and product can be detrimental for the ferrous materials. For these cases, copper nickel are used. For some applications where chloride ions are present, higher grades of stainless steel such as 904L can also be an economic selection. Certain products are so corrosive that they cannot be processed in conventional metal. For example, for concentration of sulfuric acid up to 50% at 150 degrees centigrade, we need to use for main plant items of filament owned fiberglass reinforced epoxy resin. The heating and cooling surfaces should be of impervious graphite. Other liquid properties that affect the operation and design of evaporators are specific heat, heat of concentration, freezing point and toxicity. So in summary, in this session, we discussed what is evaporation, the use of evaporation and some factors that affects the design and operation of the evaporation process.